How do you fix low soil pH? Well, we want to talk about that today. Now, it, the fix really, quite frankly, is pretty simple. But we also want to talk about how did the pH get low in the first place and how small should your grids and zones be? So we want to discuss all of that today. I bought a 60 acre field a number of years ago and I knew that some of the field was going to need some lime. So we did some grid sampling at various grid sizes. Hey, at 10 acre grids, that's not a whole lot of soil sampling work to do. You can pull those in 15 or 20 minutes. Five acre grids took a little more time and smaller grids took more time than that. But what we learned as we went from big grids to smaller grids, we could really narrow down where those low pH spots were at and then only invest in lime where we really needed it. If you make large grids or, or even if you're just taking one sample for the whole field, you just don't get a picture of where you really need the lime. And if you're putting lime out on areas that don't need it, you're definitely not gonna see a return on investment. Well, worse yet, you're gonna have a problem. So I'll just give you the example off our own farm. We were running bigger zones, we were running a lot of five acre grids, and we were liming according to those things. And what we found when we started doing one acre grids is we had made massive mistakes. Now, part of the reason we went to one acre grids is we started noticing on the yield monitor up and down fluctuation in yield in some of these fields where we had limed. Well, what had happened is we had not properly identified where to stop liming. We had five acre grids, but within that five acre grid, there were only an acre or two that actually needed the lime. Some of the rest of the field needed no lime. And now what we had done is taken pH that was actually good in the mid sixes and pushed it up into the sevens by liming where we didn't need the lime. So how do we fix that? Well, first of all, we'd overspent on the lime. We didn't need it. Number two, we'd hurt yields. That cost us money. Number three, to fix it, we have to put elemental sulfur out there. So that's just dumb, dumb, and dumb. And this is what we talk about all the time. Look, if in your fields you've got variants there where you have high pHs and low pHs, please, at least one time, do very small grids, like one acre grids, and find out where you actually need the lime. Spend the money where you truly need it and avoid where you don't, because otherwise you'll end up in the same boat as us where we overspent and and then we hurt yield. And you definitely want a variable rate to apply the lime rather than using a flat rate. Now, if your flat rate's really low, okay, you could probably do that. But in most cases, if you're putting lime out there, you want to try and get it done in one shot if you can. So make sure you're doing some variable rates as well. If you've only got to move the pH a little bit, it makes no sense to put on the same rate as when you have to move the pH a long ways. Now we've said several times lime, and I just want to explain when you have low soil pH, basically what you have is just too much hydrogen. How do you fix that hydrogen? You put out calcium carbonate. When you put calcium carbonate or lime onto that soil, you're going to combine the calcium carbonate with the low pH or excess hydrogen that you've got out there. And the result is going to be you're going to end up with water. You're going to end up with carbon dioxide that, don't forget, carbon dioxide is what plants breathe in, so that's great, and free calcium for that soil. So no harm, it's all good, and we just wanted to explain real quick, that's what lime does in a field. Here's a couple reasons why getting your pH in order is really important. When your pH is way too low, that means it's way too acid, and you also don't have a pH way too high, but if you get that pH right in the middle, just slightly acidic in that 6.3 to 6.8 range, what we end up with is nutrient availability being maximized. And you can look at many of the charts that have been out for generations showing exactly at what pH levels nutrients become more available. And by bringing a low pH, say it's down in the fours or low fives, up into the sixes, you just get a free release of a bunch of nutrients that are tied up out in your soil. The other thing that you get is more microbial activity. So beneficial microbes, some like lower pHs, some like higher pHs, but again, if you're somewhere in the middle, you get a majority of those beneficial microbes working for your crop 24 seven for free. So why not get that pH in line where you have more microbial activity and better nutrient availability too. In order to know how much lime you need, you're gonna need to run a buffer pH test. So it's pretty simple. Once you have that, there are formulas out there that will tell you how much lime to put on based on the type of lime that you're using.
The other thing that I wanted to stress is that not all crops want a 6.3 to 6.8 pH. Blueberries, for example, you might want to be down in the 5 or 5.5 five pH. Alfalfa, barley, there are a few crops that really like close to a 7 pH to maximize the overall production. So just look at the crop you're raising, but the reason why Darren and I talk so much about that 6.3 to 6.8 range is that's the ideal pH for corn, soybeans, and wheat. Well, getting that pH right also allows your crop to compete well against weeds like our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show.